All right, so I'm here to, t to tell you about the first results of uh, implementing a more realistic uh, feedback model in our uh, simulations of galaxy formation. Here are my, colla my, my collaborators, Anatoly, Daniel, uh, Pedro Colina, uh, Yunam, and Joel Primek. So uh, various uh, theoretical and observational works have pointed out that radiation pressure is a very important uh, mechanism in, in galaxy formation. Um, and it's, uh, it's expected to have at least a threefold effect. Um, first, it disrupts molecular clouds way before the, su the first supernovae go off. So it uh, regulates the star formation. It provides turbulence in molecular clouds. And it, uh, it drives uh, gas outflows, at least at high redshift. Motivated by this, uh, we're implementing uh, radiative feedback in hydro art. And we do it according to uh, what uh, other theorists uh, tell us, uh, the radiation, f uh, the, pr the force of the radiation on the gas is proportional to the, lumin the luminosity of the star cluster multiplied by some optical depth of the gas to the, uh, the gas and dust to the radiation. Um, this optical depth is uh, supposed to be proportional to the uh, column density of the gas. And uh, we can easily estimate the luminosity in our simulations uh, to be about 100 times the, the power deposited by supernovae. This effect only happens for the first about 3 million years and then it dies off. So it has a different, uh, uh, different time. You can, you can notice here that this model has no free parameters. Um, since, we don't, since we don't resolve the optical depth in, in our simulations, um, at a given resolution, we take the results of simulations at higher resolution as, as those uh, run by uh, Phil Hopkins and others, and we adopt the value uh, of uh, this optical depth, which is about uh, between 10 and 50. So in order to understand the effect that radiation pressure has in driving outflows and preventing the star formation, uh, uh, regulating star formation, preventing the formation of a massive stellar bulge, and reducing the baryon fraction, we run three initial models. Uh, two of those are a Milky Way progenitor uh, dark matter halo, the same halo. It's not chosen in any, spe in any specific way to have a, a certain uh, merger history. Um, and we also run a dwarf uh, halo. The, they're all run at very high resolution, slightly different uh, star formation prescriptions, but they shouldn't be a big factor. The biggest difference is highlighted here uh, in, the, in the, the two Milky Way models. We're comparing a model with uh, stellar uh, supernova feedback uh, and stellar winds versus a model with supernova feedback, stellar winds, and radiation pressure. Uh, in, in all of the models, we're using the highest possible radiative forcing that uh, uh, other people find. Uh, so that's a factor of 50 to try to bracket the effect. So here's the results. Um, first, if we take a look at the distribution of the mass in the massive galaxy, this is the model with supernovae feedback. This is the model with uh, supernovae and radiation pressure. And we see that uh, the, uh, the density, um, the central density in the, in the stars is strikingly different in the model with radiation pressure. There's no stellar bulge and the density is uh, highly suppressed in the center. And we also see, comparing to an NFW profile, that the dark matter is much uh, is cuspy in the supernovae case, where it's, whereas we seem to be forming a dark matter core in the case with radiation pressure. Uh, if we look at the total uh, mass budget, we see that there's more than a factor of 10 suppression in the total stellar mass. Uh, between, I'm sorry? This is at redshift three. Uh, yeah, this model is only run to redshift three, whereas the dwarf is run to redshift zero. Um, so at this redshift, we, we, see, we already see a very high suppression, suppression of the star formation. And you see that the model with radiation pressure has more gas in the galaxy, uh, partly because this gas is not forming stars. 
if you look at the, uh, the circular velocity profiles, you see the signature of overcooling of the gas towards the center, runaway formation of stars, and a very spiky rotation curve with a peak circular velocity of about 200 kilometers per second. And you see that in the model of radiation pressure, there's no bulge, very little stellar contribution, and the, the rotation curve is flat, and dark matter dominated at all radii. So the star formation is drastically reduced, especially in the central kiloparsec, with radiation pressure. If we look at the distribution of the gas properties, uh, here I'll look at um, the distribution of the density per logarithmic, uh, the distribution of the mass per logarithmic density interval on the left side within the galaxy and on the right side within the viral radius, uh, two different regimes. And you see a striking difference in the density distribution here. This is the, star, the density uh, threshold for star formation. And you see that in the case without radiation pressure, the gas is allowed to collapse to very high densities. All this gas is forming stars. Radiation pressure is, pre, uh, is preventing that from happening. And it's shifting this gas to a lower, more diffuse component. In the, if you look at the gas within the viral radius, the CGM, you see the opposite effect. Uh, the diffuse gas is, uh, uh, is reduced, so it seems like a lot of this gas mass is being transferred to the halo. If you look at the radial flows, again, within the galaxy and within the viral radius, uh, here I shaded the regions corresponding to inflow and outflows out of the galaxy, we see that with radiation pressure, the distribution of the radial velocities is much broader. So you have both more outflows, much more gas outflowing out of the galaxy, and also more gas inflowing. Although most of the mass which is here and is inflowing in the, in the baseline model, uh, it seems to be, uh, this inflow seems to be quenched. And so not as, m as much gas is accreting towards the center of the galaxy, which is in line with uh, preventing the, star the formation of a bulge. If you look at uh, the distribution of the, radi the radial flows within the viral radius, the story is sort of the same. There's a quenching of the inflow here towards smaller velocities, but the outflows tell us a different story. The model with radiation pressure has less outflowing mass within the viral radius. So what's happening here seems to be that there's not, the star formation is suppressed so much that radiation pressure is, is killing uh, the effect um, on the outflows because there's not enough feedback energy in total. If we look at the uh, temperature profiles of the gas, this is the fraction of uh, mass in each uh, temperature component coded by color in the two models as a function of distance. We see that in the in the model without radiation pressure, the, the galaxy is dominated by cold and dense gas, and the halo is dominated by very hot gas. Whereas in the model with radiation pressure, there's very little cold gas in the center where it cannot form stars. Most of, the, most of this gas has either flowed out or, um, or uh, been uh, heated up. And we also see that there's no million degree gas in the halo. So the, this refers to the inability of radiation pressure to uh, to heat the gas in the halo due to uh, not having enough total feedback energy due to the suppressed star formation. If we look at the baryon fraction profiles, this is the amount of mass in each, uh, in each component. We see that within the galaxy, uh, they're very different, but the most important quantity is here at the viral radius. The, uh, the baryon fraction is actually higher in the model with radiation pressure Although, if you look at the, only the cold baryons, radiation pressure is, is able to reduce the, the baryon fraction to about 10% and the stellar fraction to only 1.8%. However, these baryons are still, are still there. They're not pushed outside the halo. They're just hot. Um, and here's what, uh, here's what this uh, uh, models look in, in Peter's plot, in his most recent plot. We see that at redshift 3, which is the yellow line, if you do a little bit of uh, extrapolation, it's, it's right where it should be for a, for a halo of that mass, whereas the model with, uh, su with only supernova feedback already has too many stars. 
the star formation, the assembly of the stellar mass shows the same story from early on. You get a very about a factor of 10 suppression in the, in the SFR. Now switching towards the, the dwarf galaxy, we see that there's a little bit more contribution from the stars at the center compared to the Milky Way at high redshift. The dark, uh, although the dark matter core, core is more pronounced and there seems to be less gas in the halo. Uh, this dark matter core is consistent with uh, results by other groups. So it's possible, possibly due to episodic gas blowouts expanding the halo. The dark matter, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the circular velocity curve is very flat, is flat and slowly, it's also slowly rising in the center. It's dominated by dark matter at all radii, although it has more of a baryonic component than in the other model. Again, remember that uh, this, is a, this is a dwarf at redshift zero. The, the fraction of gas, which is the total mass in gas over the total mass in stars is about 10, which is consistent with observations of these kinds of dwarfs. Circular velocity is about 50, 58 kilometers per second. Although there's no bulge, so it's this dominated, although it sits slightly high on the baryonic tully fischer relation, so it still has a little bit too, about a factor of two too many stars. Uh, looking at the radial flows, we see that the distribution of velocities is very narrow. There's very little mass in outflows, although there seems to be a quenching. Uh, there seems to be a, a small amount of mass accreting into the halo at about 50 kilometers per second, still at redshift zero in this dwarf galaxy, which is not quenched by radiation pressure. Uh, the temperature profiles show that there's a multi-phase uh, galactic disk dominated by cold gas. And there's a very sharp turnover to the uh, million degree or 100,000 degree gas in the halo. There's no million degree gas. That's the red line here. And we see the signature of some accretion of cold gas from the uh, intergalactic medium. The baryon fraction profiles look very different from the Milky Way model, the more massive model that had redshift. You see that the baryon fraction is actually decreased by about 50%. So radiation pressure was able to blow out half of the baryons within the real radius. And it's able to keep uh, the rest mostly hot. The cold baryon fraction is reduced to about 80, 18% of cosmic baryons and only 2% of those are in stars. Uh, if we put it on Peter's uh, plot, we see that we still ha we're within the uh, uncertainties but we're close, much closer to the, to the observations than, than before. Um, and interestingly enough, if you, if you look at the star formation history, you see that it's very different from the results of previous simulations. There's an initial, an, an initial episode, then it slows down, and then it's slowly rising towards redshift zero. This is present here. This agrees with... Uh, an absolute value with, obs with uh, observations, and it also shows the downsizing trend that has been observed, for example, by Salim and others. Uh, this is in contrast to the results of most uh, cosmological simulations, which show declining star formation histories. This is a plot by uh, Pedro Colina and others uh, with different uh, implementations of feedback and star formation. So in conclusion, uh, Radiation pressure is able to regulate the uh, star formation in both massive and dwarf galaxies. It suppresses the formation of a bulge at high redshift in a Milky Way mass uh, galaxy. But uh, the effect seems to be too strong uh, to produce outflows, at least at high redshift. And it produces a, uh, a dwarf that is still slightly too massive at redshift zero. Um, Although in the dwarf, it's, it is able to, to eject some of the baryons. And I'll leave you with that. <laughs>